Welcome to UCT Teach Ortho. This is an online teaching platform run by the Division of Orthopedic Surgery at the University of Cape Town. Today we'll be doing a practical tutorial on how to apply a below knee plaster Paris, or POP. The four pillars of POP application include the following. Patient, preparation, procedure, and finally post-POP care. To start with the patient, one must first introduce yourself to the patient, take an adequate history, examination and appropriate investigations to confirm the indications for the POP. One also needs to get full informed consent before starting. To revise the indications for baloney POP, one looks at the lower leg, at structures including the ankle, the Achilles tendon, the tarsal bones which make the hind and midfoot, and the metatarsal bones which make up the forefoot. A common indication for baloney POP includes ankle fractures. These are summarized using the Weaver classification as either a Weaver A, a Weaver B, or Weaver C, depending on where the fracture is on the fibula, medial malleolus, is, and whether or not the syndesmosis of the joint is intact. Another common injury at the ankle includes ligament injuries on both the medial and or the lateral aspects of the joint. Moving on to the Achilles tendon, a tendon rupture is not an uncommon injury and is often missed. Another indication for baloney pop includes injury to the tarsal bones, which make up the mid and hind foot. Finally, one should consider injury to the metatarsal bones, which make up a portion of the forefoot. Moving next to preparation, it is critically important to be well prepared before applying the pop. The materials you will need are as follows. Gloves, an apron, adequate newspaper or linen savers, cotton wool, rolls of plaster, and a bucket of water. The temperature of the water is critically important. If it is too hot, it may risk burning the patient. However, if it's too cold, it may take too long to set. If you're still new to applying pops, we recommend using colder water to give yourself more time to apply the pop. We can now move on to the procedure itself. The first part is to do a full neurovascular examination of the affected limb before applying the pop. Start by feeling for the disadus pedis pulse, then feel for the posterior tibial pulse. Assess the sensory function in the distribution of the superficial peroneal nerve, deep peroneal nerve, serial nerve, and saphenous nerve. Before moving on, do a full inspection of the ankle, foot, and lower limb, looking for any open lesions or wounds that need to be dealt with before applying the pop. The next step of the procedure includes reduction and positioning. The different reductions needed for each ankle fracture is beyond the scope of this tutorial and will be covered in subsequent videos. The usual position for the baloney pop includes moving the ankle to 90 degrees dorsiflexion, otherwise known as the neutral position. This is done to prevent the formation of an equinus deformity. However, one might opt to split the ankle into plantar flexion. Indications for this include a fracture of the talus and a rupture of the Achilles tendon. In this video, we'll be demonstrating splitting the ankle in the neutral position. The next part of the procedure is applying the cotton wool. Here is a demonstration of applying the cotton wool starting at the proximal end of the lower limb at the level of the tibial tuberosity. When applying the cotton wool, make sure that you get a 50% overlap between each of the layers. Make sure that you don't apply the cotton wool too tight and equally don't make it too loose. Ensure that you cover all surfaces of the lower limb right down to the level of the metatarsal heads. Once you've reached this level, break off the remaining cotton wool and add additional protection to the bony provinces which include the medial and lateral malleoli. We can now move on to applying the plaster. Start by dipping the roll of plaster into the bucket of water. When applying the plaster, ensure that you leave an edge of cotton wool at both the proximal and distal ends. Ensure that you get a 50% overlap between each of the layers as demonstrated when applying the cotton wool. The next step includes moulding. Throughout applying the plaster, it is critically important to constantly rub it down with copious amounts of water. This helps form union between the various layers of plaster applied. Once two layers of plaster have been applied, it is important to carefully fold down the edges at both the proximal and the distal ends. When moulding the plaster, one makes use of three-point pressure by applying pressure at three separate spots as demonstrated in this diagram. This moulding process happens continuously until such time that the cast assumes a shape that is desired. 
One then repeats the plaster application and moulding phases between three and four times to form a cast of adequate strength and shape. The final phase of the procedure includes smoothing down the cast surface. One needs to constantly mould the cast using the palmer surfaces of your hands. This should be done repeatedly to try and form a union between the various layers and increase the strength of the cast. In the final stages of the pop application, a handy tip is taking off one of your gloves. One can then use the smooth surface of the glove and rub it continuously against the cast. This creates a smooth surface and a pleasant aesthetic result. Once the pop has been applied, it is important to reassess the neurovascular status. The final step is that of post-pop care. One's biggest concern after applying a pop is the development of compartment syndrome. This can be avoided if the doctor adequately educates the patient on how to identify the danger signs, constantly reassesses the limb, and removes the pop immediately if compartment syndrome is suspected. The patient should be well versed in the danger signs of compartment syndrome. These include crescendo pain, not responding to analgesia, paresthesia, paralysis, anesthesia, and they might also find that the limb becomes swollen. The patient should also be instructed on how to protect the cast. This includes not sticking down foreign objects beneath the cast and ensuring that it remains dry at all times. Thank you for watching this UCT Teach Author video. We hope that you found this tutorial useful and will continue to follow our YouTube channel.